Welcome to Master Math. For the next couple of lessons, we're going to be talking about statistics. Today we're going to talk about stem and leaf plots, but it might be helpful if we looked at statistics and, and thought about what the statistics mean. Well, before you can talk about statistics, you need to talk about data, because statistics is used to understand data. And what's data? Well, data is just numbers. And everybody collects data. Every institution collects data. If you're a scientist, you collect data on your experiments. If you're a business, you, correct, you collect data on your sales, data on your business. If you're a, a school, you collect data. If you're a government agency, you collect data. Everybody collects data. Now, a business collects lots of data. When you go to a store and buy something, you go to the cash register and you give them your money or your credit card and they punch it into the cash register and you take your, your product and you leave. But you've left a lot of information behind. When they punch that, that sale into the cash register, they were collecting data. They collected data about what you purchased. They collected data about what time of the day you purchased it. If you paid with a credit card, they may also have data collected about your age, your income, the credit limit on your credit card. They've got a lot of information. And all that information from all their stores goes to a central computer that assembles all this data and collects all kinds of information about how their store works. When do sales happen? How old are customers? Now they collect that huge amount of data from a huge number of stores and it's just a bunch of numbers, a whole bunch of numbers, and it would be kind of meaningless without statistics. Because the store will then apply statistical tools to all that data so that they can understand that data better. And so that they can communicate that understanding of the data to other people so they can understand the business better. Now, let's look at an example of some data. This is data collected by the federal government. And boy, there's a lot of numbers there. And I look at that data, that raw data, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I want to look at this data. I want to throw my arms up in the air and yell, oh my goodness, this is confusing. Well, stop crying. We're going to find a way to make this data a little more understandable. And I've started with a slightly smaller data set here, so we could do this a little quicker. This table shows students 1 through 20 and their test scores on test number 1 and test number 2. Student 2 got a 86 on the first test and an 86 on the second. Student 6 got a 79 and an 88. So I got some data about how students did on two different tests. And I can see a little bit of a pattern there, but it's pretty confusing. I think I need to find a way to organize this and simplify it so I can see it a little bit better. And the first thing I want to do is put the test scores in order. And I've picked uh, the test number one to order them by. I'm going to order them from the lowest score in test number one up to the highest score in test number one. And when I do that, it looks like this. Test number one, the lowest score was 46. The highest score was 95. Now, I'm going to try to organize this data using a stem and leaf plot. And I'm just going to first organize test number one. So let's hide test number two, just so it doesn't confuse you. Then I'm going to create a stem and a leaf plot. And a stem and a leaf plot is a little bit like a matrix. I create a T. And the left column is called stem. And the right column is called leaf. And I put this one in there because we're talking about test number one. This is the stem and leaf for step num step test number one. Now, first thing I've got is stem. And you'll see under STEM, I've got a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, and a 9. Where did those numbers come from? Well, they came from the table over here. That 4 is the 4 over here. And then I got a 5 over here, and there's nothing behind it because there are no 50s over here. Nobody scored in the 50s. But they did score in the 60s, so I've got a 6 here. 
and they scored in the 70s, so I've got a 7 there. And they scored in the 80s, and they scored in the 90s, so I've got an 8 and a 9. So my stems are the first number in the scores. Now I've got a leaf. Where's the leaf come from? Well, you see, under 4, I had one score, a 46. So 6 is the second number in 46. I put the 6 there. Now let's go down and look at the 90s. I had a 92. So I go to my 9 and I put a 2 in. And I had another 92. So I go to my 9 and I put a second 2 in. And then I had a 95. So I put a 5 in. So now I've got my stem and leaf plot. I know in the, the 40 units I had one answer and it was 46. I had none in the 50s. In the 60s I had a 62, a 64, a 68, another 68, and a 69, and so forth. Well that's interesting. Now let's do test number two. We'll get rid of those uh, bars that were hiding test number two and we'll create a stem and leaf plot for test number two. And you'll notice in test number two I've got no scores in the 40s and no scores in the 50s and I've got just one score in the 60s, 61. So under, no I got two in the 60s. I got to get, oh yeah there's another one. So I've got 61 and 69. 61 and 69. And in the 70s, I got a bunch of scores. 73, another 73, a 74, a 75, a 78, and two 79s. So now I've created two stem and leaf plots, one for test number one and one for test number two. Well, what's that tell me? I mean, what, what advantage have I gained by creating these stem and leaf plots? Well, let's look at each one of them separately and see what they can tell us. Let's look at the first one for test number one first. What do I see? Well, I see that most of the scores are in the 70s. There are more scores in the 70s than in any other of the groups. There's more than in the 60s. There's none in the 50s. There's only one in the 40s. So I see that most of the scores are in the 70s. I also see that there's only one score below 60. That would be scores in the 50s or the 40s, there's only one. And I see that there's seven scores above, above 80. So there's 80. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I also see that there's an outlier. This 46, that's way out in the extreme. There's nothing near it, so it's kind of an outlier. So I've been able to see certain things by organizing the scores from test one into a stem and leaf plot. Now let's look at test number two and see what we find out. Well, we can see that most of the scores are in the 80s. There's more 80s than anything else. I see there are no scores below 60. There are no, none in the 40s or the 50s. I see that there are 11 scores above 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I see that the scores in general on, on test number 2 were higher than the scores on test number 1. I had more scores above 80. I had fewer scores below 60. There was no outlier. So the scores were higher on the second test. Let's look at some other statistics to see if they bear out the same conclusion. If I get the mean for test number one, it's 76, and if I get the median, it's 77.5. For test number two, I had a mean of 81 and a median of 82.5. So both my stem and leaf plots and my mean and median tell me that the kids did better on the second test than they did on the first test. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. All right, we're going to create a stem and leaf plot for this data. And I already put the data in order from smallest to largest uh, for you, because that makes it a lot easier to create this stem and leaf plot. 
And the stem and leaf plot would look just like that. I look at my numbers and I've got quite a few that are in the 50s. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six numbers in the 50s. And the lowest is 53, and there's two of those, so I've got three and three. And then I've got a single four, and then I've got a five, and then I've got an eight and a nine. So my 50s are, are spelled out there after the five. My 60s, I've got four of them, 60, 62, 63, and 69. And I've got just one in the 70s, and that's 70. All right, we're to make a stem and leaf plot for this data. And I didn't put it in order. I hope you did that yourself. If you did, it's kind of easy to see that in the tens, I've got one, two, three, four data points. I've got 12, 16, 19, and another 19. And in the twenties, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine data points. 20, 21, another 21, a 23, and so forth. Well, now I've got a stem and leaf plot. What do I do with it? Well, that's your next challenge. Hit your pause button and answer these questions. What were the least and greatest attendance? How many times did less than 20 attend? What was the average attendance? Hit your pause button, put the answers together, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answers. Well, we've got the stem and leaf plot, and we've, we're asked to try to understand a few things about the data from the stem and leaf plot. And the first question is, what were the least and the greatest attendance? Well, that's kind of easy. We can go to the stem and leaf plot and get to our lowest stem number, which is 1, and get the lowest leaf number, which is 2. So our lowest attendance was 12. And our largest attendance, we go to the largest stem number and the largest leaf number. So the largest attendance was 32, and the answers are 12 and 32. How many times did less than 20 attend uh, one of these meetings? Well, I got one example, two examples, three examples, and four examples. So there were four times that less than 20 attended. And what was the average attendance? And you'll see I put average in parentheses because average may mean mean to you and it means mean to most people, but really average is just a, a measure of central tendency. And we could, we could create an average uh, a mean score for all these or we could look at this and say what's in the middle. What is the central point? What is the central tendency? And I'd say that eh, it's right about in there. And that's good enough on a stem and leaf plot. I'd say it's about 24. Well, that's our lesson on stem and leaf plots. Now it's time to test your, your knowledge. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on stem and leaf plots. After you've done the worksheet, go back to MasterMath and do the quiz on stem and leaf plots. And then come back and see us again soon. Next time we're going to talk about histograms.